Welcome back to W5. Well, we've just seen how some of us treat our friends in the animal world. Now we take a look at how we treat each other. Now, you wouldn't expect that a small, quiet, picturesque town in southern Ontario could become a battleground over some pretty fundamental basics of democracy. But that's just what happened in Alora. Now, it began innocently enough. Some people wanted a racetrack complete with slot machines to come to town, and others didn't. The pro and the anti forces both formed groups, and they debated. Eventually, the pro gambling group won out, and that's when it really all started. And it didn't finish until the town council hit up the losing side for tens of thousands of dollars. The story now of paying the price in a debatable democracy. To unleash the sheriff on your own citizens is wrong. We were exercising our democratic rights. They're attempting to punish us. If citizens are allowed to be intimidated... It was disgusting. This is how you destroy involvement in community work. The discordant voices of a small town facing a big crisis. I think it's just a, been a bull, bullheaded, egotistical pursuit by people in power. A town council facing down its own citizens. George, I'm just personally disappointed that you had met with council without giving us first even a hearing. A question of democracy and dissent that has torn it apart. The town is Alora, tucked away in one of the prettiest corners of southern Ontario. It's a place of natural beauty, dominated by a gorge carved by the Grand River. An old mill town that has become a gentrified center of a vibrant arts and music establishment. It's the kind of town where everybody knows your name. But now, it's the kind of town where everyone knows where you stand on gambling and the state of local democracy. It all started with this, the site of a new racetrack with gambling and slot machines. This construction site on the edge of town has left a divide deeper than the gorge itself. The future home of the Grand River racetrack and slots, a place bigger than downtown, a place that is designed to attract more gamblers every day than the entire population of Alora. Local businessman Adrian DeVries says he's never seen anything this divisive before. You know, we, we've had little issues that, that have come up in the, in the game. It's nothing ever this big has been decided in, in town. So yes, it was like the A-bomb went off in the middle of Alora, and you know, which side of it are you on, mm -hmm. right? And from the start, most people in town did choose sides. Those against the slots formed a group and rallied around a few central ideas. This gambling thing is going to revolutionize this town, I think. Uh, it, it's, it seems to me so inappropriate for a lore. Pastor Don Rogers was born in Alora. His church now stands just about a mile from the farm where he grew up. I'm sure there's lots of ticket buyers here, you know, with the lotteries and stuff, but but this this is changing the face of Alora forever. It was absolutely inappropriate for this community. Olga Damien and her husband moved here for the quiet life, and they are now part of the anti-slots faction. However you feel about gambling, whether you indulge in it or not, a casino is not something that any community wants. Um, there's all kinds of baggage attached to it, um, just from an emotional point of view, setting aside even morality. It's just um, something that is seen as a blight on a community. But on Main Street, they had more immediate concerns. They had watched tourism decline year by year. Uh, Laura used to be packed 10 years or 1990. Laura drew 300,000 people a year, and you couldn't see the sidewalk for the people. So I think it's a wonderful partnership between us. They want to promote not only the raceway itself, but the whole area as a destination. The divide was played out weekly in the local newspaper. I would say on the basis of the correspondence that one sees in the local paper, 70% of the community would be against it and approximately 30% for. But the other side plays the numbers game as well, claiming that it represents the majority. Paul Walker works for the Chamber of Commerce and runs the local liquor store. The silent majority of the people that have lived here all their lives 
They're the ones who really like this idea. Some of them wrote some letters to the paper to express their concerns, but most of the papers were against the, the, tr the truck. But to understand why this racetrack is being built in Alora, you first have to head out of town, about 20 kilometers to the west. This is the neighboring town of Elmira. The folks here have had a racetrack for more than 30 years, but the only gambling here was on the horses. Owned by a non-profit group called the Woolwich Agricultural Society, the proceeds from the racetrack fund the annual country fair. Traditionally, agricultural societies run the racetracks, but this one wanted more than just the ponies. It wanted the slots. Why? Don Jewett and Ted Clark are board members of the Woolwich Agricultural Society. I guess you'd have to understand that or at least accept that ag societies across Ontario are failing because of a lack of resource. Agricultural societies are going broke because they simply can't compete with the proliferation of racetracks that have added slot machines. The quality of horse racing is determined by the purses you can pay and, and our ability to pay purses has decreased in comparison with our competitors. But there was a problem. Neighbors like Jerry Forler didn't like it one bit. The way we see it, a few slots, it's 200 slots. They're talking about on weekends up to maybe 1,600 cars coming down those few uh, main streets. We just don't feel uh, that the expansion of gambling in Ontario has to go any further than it's gone. You know, in a small town like this, you can't hide a casino. But there was another, even more powerful opposition. One of the largest Mennonite congregations in the province. As far as the racetrack was concerned, that was fine. You know, one or two racing nights a week or whatever it was that they were having. But to have that seven, seven days a week and for 16 hours in a day, that's a lot of cars coming and it just makes it even more difficult as far as buggy traffic is concerned. So after six months of intense debate, the town council voted it down. Told that its slots were not wanted at home, the Woolwich Agricultural Society went down the road, and it found this piece of unused scrubland just above the village of Alora. From the very beginning, it was a pressure cooker situation. The provincial government offered the local township what seemed like a dream deal. 5% of the gambling revenues, that's about one and a half million dollars a year, more than it would ever get from property taxes on this piece of land. The catch, the local town council was given just one month in which to make a decision. The battle lines were drawn. From the pulpit to kitchen tables, the opposition got organized. And from the start, they knew that money would be at the heart of this debate, but no one knew just how heated it would become. We really felt from the very beginning that the municipality wasn't listening to us. And a very concrete manifestation of that was this business of those slot signs, which is rel a relatively minor thing in itself. You would put them on your lawn or where they were is along, along road allowances, the same kinds of places that you would put election signs and they were systematically removed, even from your own private property. They were removed, for instance, from my lawn back there. Who was removing them? The municipal employees. Under the orders of? The municipal administration. Under the orders of? The mayor? The council. The town denies that charge, but accusations and denials of bad behavior were tossed about by both sides. For those who desperately wanted the casino, they waited their moment, and it came on a cold, late winter night. The law requires that council hold at least one public meeting, and just one public meeting it was. It took place in the biggest space in town, the Alora Community Center. Mayor George Pinckney and his six councillors had never seen so many people at a public meeting. The pro-slots forces were out early. The place was packed. I got there at 5 o'clock because I knew it was going to be packed. And if you didn't get there by 7, you weren't going to get in. The mayor had this amateur video taken of the meeting. Everyone in the hall had a chance to speak, and everyone, it seemed, had different concerns. How would you want your 19-year-old kid hanging around? 
um, hanging around a gambling facility. You don't realize without slots, there is no racetrack. Slot machines do not create problem gamblers. They identify them. That 63% of Canadians agree that it is their legal right to gamble. Maybe with all this generation of money coming in that's going to save your tax dollars and mine, maybe I can get my drainage ditch cleaned out that was supposed to be done four years ago. Thanks. Someone's daughter, grandson or granddaughter will, not might be, will become addicted to gambling. Pastor Don Rogers remembers this evening as a turning point in Alora's history. At that meeting, there certainly were angry voices aired, and I spoke uh, on the moral issue of this event at that arena that night and, and mentioned the potential of suicide happening. History has shown the problems range from days dismissed at work bad debts, theft, marriage breakup, and in some cases, suicide. And uh, some heckler at the back of the auditorium was heard to say, laughingly, and we even have a gorge for them to jump into. That's how awful uh, the attitudes had developed. Uh, people want this gaming facility no matter what, and it seems we've a certain percentage have lost the value of life, you know. I have a list of... The meeting went on until 2 o'clock in the morning, but some thought it was a waste of time. The public meeting, it, it, in my mind, was a farce. Uh, I think their mind was made up before they ever opened the doors of the public meeting. Just 15 hours later, at 5 o'clock the next day, the council voted. It was a 3-3 tie a deadlock. Mayor George Pinckney cast the deciding vote, and he voted and, uh, in favor of the racetrack. It almost seems a bit rushed, doesn't it? One meeting and then a few hours later the final vote on it. Was there not a way to have greater public participation in this? Uh, 1,500 people at a public meeting is the greatest participation I'm aware of that ever took place in the law. And yes, I would much prefer to have had a six-month um, opportunity for a window for investigation. Uh, that was clearly not possible for us. Um, five minutes before the uh, council meeting took place uh, on the um, 30th, uh, we were in conversation with uh, people from the provincial government uh, advising us that there was no opportunity for an extension of time. So the province was putting you in a vice. They said, get on with it now or you're out of the game. Well, that's quite, quite true. But the Citizens' Coalition wasn't about to admit defeat just yet. It took its case to the Ontario Municipal Board, and it lost. So it then took the case to the Ontario Superior Court. It lost there, too. The last chance, the Ontario Court of Appeal. And that's where, for the Citizens' Coalition, perhaps the strangest turn in this story took place. When we... They've flattened the field and graded the ground for the racetrack. It's called the Grand River Raceway, and it'll be open next spring. Most people in Alora have accepted a racetrack with slots in their midst, but the issue is far from settled, and it's far from forgotten. The Citizens Coalition took its fight against this racetrack as far up the ladder as it could, eventually appearing in front of the Ontario Court of Appeal. It argued that the one public meeting that was held on the racetrack and the slots was fundamentally flawed and that there should have been another one. Well, the judge ruled against the coalition and then added that the coalition had to pay the legal costs of the township, which eventually amounted to $86,000. Well, suddenly this wasn't a fight about slots anymore. This was a fight about grassroots democracy. 109 people concerned citizens who had signed a legal petition because they believed that a racetrack would ruin their town. Now, divided among each one, it doesn't amount to very much, under $800. But money isn't really the issue. I think this charge that they're levying on the uh, coalition is totally wrong. People demonstrating their democratic rights 
and then they get penalised. It's very disturbing that this is going on in this community. This is a very special community and to see this happening is uh, very upsetting. I think the, uh, the feeling amongst all of us that, that this is a very unfair process. We, uh, we felt like we were exercising our democratic rights and we feel now like they're attempting to punish us for doing that. Those opposed to the slots had raised the money for their own lawyers through bake sales and donations. But now, faced with paying the township's legal costs, they're beginning to gather, trying to figure out what this will mean. What if 10 people said, we will not pay? You can come after it, but we will not pay. What happens? Well, what may happen is the town council could file what's called a writ of execution. That means if any one of the appellants tries to sell their home, the entire $86,000 could be removed from the sale, something that has Pastor Don Rogers extremely worried. I'm heading towards retirement uh, in, the, in the future. How far down the road, I don't know. But I would want to sell my house. It would affect my ability to sell my home. Um, I mean, it's devastating to community, it, to the people, uh, the appellants, if they go that far. And it could go further, showing up on credit card applications. It could affect their ability to conduct business if they needed a line of credit. It could virtually destroy each person's credit rating overnight. Now, in our legal system, it is not unusual that the loser pays. But the coalition thought it was acting in the public good, and it never expected to get hit with costs. But even more astonishing for these people is the fact that their own mayor and council could simply drop the whole thing by not proceeding. But Mayor Pinckney says, don't count on it. Some people are saying, though, that there is an element of vengeance in you as the mayor and as the council, in effect, suing your own citizens because they disagreed with the decision that you made and tried peacefully to oppose it. Uh, as a council, we are not suing anybody. We are just asking to recover costs that were incurred by the municipality and the council. What part of no do they not understand? Many business people in town support the mayor's hardline approach. We can't have everybody in town suing the municipality. We can't have every group in town that's not happy with a decision in the municipality to uh, take them to court. The taxpayers of this town would never forgive council for letting them off. This is, this is our tax money we're talking about here. Incredibly, it took two years for the Citizens Coalition to get an appointment to see Mayor George Pinckney. In summary, your threat to unleash the sheriff on your own citizens and residents is wrong. Dead wrong. But this meeting didn't change a thing. The coalition asked the council to allow them to send the $86,000 to a charity, like the local hospital. But the mayor said, not a chance. You and council aren't going to cut these guys any slack, are you? Well, no. Short answer is no. Long answer is no. I think it's been dealt with in cold, hard fashion with that almighty dollar in mind and uh, s seemingly not caring who gets hurt in the process. The message here seems to be, if you want to fight City Hall, fine, but you better come with a checkbook in your back pocket. And add to that, that only the rich would ever dare speak out against City Hall. And that is democracy at its worst. If we take that away from the citizens of, of municipal government, if we take the checks and balances away for, because of fear and intimidation, then I think we're in big trouble across Canada. So in Alora, for gamblers and non-gamblers alike, for a long time to come, they'll remember this, that if you're going to play the game, you better first check the odds, because they always favor the house. Now, the coalition has attracted at least one ally. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association has taken up their cause. And later this year, they will be asking the Supreme Court of Canada to set out clear rules on costs in public interest.